Uh, hi everybody, uh, welcome to another session of uh, Wing Chun Kun. Uh, I, with COVID that I'm staying home so much, I figure I'll do a few more videos. So uh, here's a uh, very, uh, say, a, a popular move. And I want to really uh, disprove the practicality of, uh, of uh, this move. Um, it looks on the outside, looks like it actually um, is uh, kind of uh, makes sense, uh, if you know what I mean. But uh, when you really break the moves down, you realize that uh, it actually is uh, not very useful at all. Um, so uh, this move uh, involves uh, uh, this dummy here that I've made. Uh, this is the arm here and this is the hand that holds the staff. And the staff is about, uh, give or take, six and a half feet long. And uh, this would be a very typical way of somebody uh, holding a staff uh, and they're going to thrust the staff at me. So in that case, uh, one of the very, very common moves that they, that they teach is that you do this. Okay, when they thrust their staff at you, you, you move to the side. You don't want to be here so that uh, you're going to get stabbed. So you move, you move to the side. So when you move to the side, they tell you that you need to go hun with this, this arm. Hun with this arm. Take a big step with your foot. So use this as a bridge to engage as soon as they stab. Take a big step and hun at the same time. And then they teach you to go and stab the guy in the body. Okay? Now there's something really, really wrong with this move. Uh, several things wrong with this move. Uh, I'm not going to move away right now, but if you see something really wrong with this move, one is right here. Um, if you can see right here, this sword is here, right in front of this arm, and they are neglecting this hand here to stab the body, which is completely wrong. Um, because when you're dealing with weapons, um, it's not like Wing Chun where you need to stab the body first. This is something in weapons training where you have to take care of the hand and the arm then the body. Even if the body is free for you to stab, you still make sure that you need to cut the hand first before you stab the body. Because people aren't going to disappear as soon as you touch them. While they're swinging a sword into your head over here, it's not going to, their hands and their weapon isn't going to disappear as soon as you stab them here. Uh, whoopee do, you're going to stab him a second earlier and he's going to kill you with a sword or a stab in your face right here a second later. So if he dies a second earlier and you die a second later, you still lose. So in weapons training, fighting against another person with a weapon, especially we're talking about uh, a non-armor situation, no gauntlet, no, no armor situation. You must take care of the hand, the wrist, the forearm behind the elbow. You must take care of the weapon that he's holding. Because if you're going like this, then he is here free to hit you with his staff. So that, that's rule number one. So now we can talk about beats now. Okay, like how many steps it takes and how many movement we are looking at. Unless this guy stabs me with a, with a staff and freezes and then wait for me to come in. Because nobody is really going to do that. No matter how slow they, they fight, nobody's going to stab you and wait for you to come in. And look at the trouble and how many steps that I have to take. 
This is one step. This is two step. Hun step hit. Okay, this is the bridge. Hun step hit. That is four steps. One. Two, three is to step, four is to hit. I have to perform four steps in the time that he thrusts this thing at me. No way, there's no way I can do this, this, advance, ignore the hand completely when it's right in front of your blade and stab him. This is completely uh, useless. Now, you might maybe say you can make it fast and do these four steps in two beats. So this is one, and this is two beats. It's still not fast enough because he's stabbing you with one beat and you're responding in two beats thinking that he's going to stay there and freeze up. No way he's going to stay there and freeze up. So, hitting the body, cutting the body is wrong, neglecting the hand, that's completely wrong. Now, doing a hyun from here is really, really difficult because your hands are here. And now you have to go over, this arm here is going over the danger zone, which is the staff here. He's stabbing forward. When you contact the staff here, you have to put your arm here over the point of the staff to him. So there's a good chance that this can come down here, which then you cannot go over to him. There's a good chance that this staff is going to go right into your bicep. So now you go over and you know what is going to happen is when you hoon and advance, you're moving the staff this way. Okay, your force is going through this way while you want to attack him like this. When you push this staff this way, it's going to go like this. Staff play 101. Okay, I'm getting the two, uh, two swords as a bridge. When I hoon here, I'm pushing this way. When I'm pushing this way, he's going to say, Oh, thank you! While I'm trying to go like this to reach him. When you hit, you're telling him to hit me here in the head. Because you're pushing that this way. You neglected this now. You pushed it this way. You're too eager. Neglecting the hand and you're too eager to stab the body for no apparent reason. And you're leaving this here completely open. And you're actually asking, asking him to circle around to hit you. So therefore this move, really I, I don't recommend. I don't recommend at all. Instead, here is a move that requires one movement, one beat. There are no changes to this move whatsoever. Since you've contacted the sword already with a bridge, like this, having their staff in between your two swords, all you need to do is this. I'll show it in normal speed. Problem solved. I just cut his fingers. One movement, now with his fingers cut, now you can go in and do that. You're there already. When you do this, you're there already. You've established the bridge. If you establish the bridge, just cut along. You got the bridge? Move up, cut the fingers, then cut the body. So this is one beat. 
as he stabs me, I just go right in. He's coming forward. In that one beat, as he comes forward, I just go in. He comes forward and I'm going forward, closing the gap in that same beat. And when I'm like this, he, he's kind of locked. He can't go left because I'm blocking here. He can't go right because I'm blocking here. He can't go low because I have this blocking his stab. He can't go low. And this is out of 45. So he can't, both of these swords out of 45. So they can't go left. They can't go right. They can't go up and they cannot go down. Especially when this beat, he's moving forward and he's thrusting forward. And in the same beat, I'm locking all four direction for his blade and I'm moving forward at him. So that's how I managed to get to his finger in that one movement, one beat to chop his fingers. And then obviously after that, then you can have the arm and then the body. And that is the order in which you need to attack. Now this arm, your right arm has to be here and it's the left blade that goes forward first. You cannot switch it the other way. You screwed, if you use this way first, then what happens is this staff is free to hit you in the head from over here. It's because you're not protecting your head right now. So in, in this uh, move, this blade, your right blade has to be here protecting your, your, the most important part of your body, which is your head. And then this is the one that slices the fingers first. Once the finger is sliced, then you can then use this to, 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 to annihilate his arm and then his uh, body. Because now the finger is sliced, he cannot hold the staff to hit you in the head. So this gets the protection you need. This just goes, then the fingers, the arm, and then the body. And that is how this uh, move is uh, performed. One movement, one beat, no hassle, and you're done. Wear a mask when you're out, stay safe everybody, and uh, have a nice day. Thanks, bye.